Dear Data Aspirants, Welcome back. In today's video, we introduce Harsh Sanna to you, a civil engineer who fearlessly embraced a new path in the data analytics industry. In Skillovilla's success stories, Harsh unveils his inspiring tale of reinvention and discovers how consistency can unlock your true potential. So what's the bait? Let's hear him out. Hey, hi Harsh. Hello. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good as well. Thank you so much for asking. So first of all, thank you so much Harsh for doing this uh, interview with us. I mean, I'm really excited to know about your journey at Skiller Villa. So, you know, before further ado, let's go ahead with that. Uh, first, I would like to know about you and about your background. How did you end up choosing data analytics as your career? So if you can, you know, just tell us about yourself. So my name is Harsh Sena and I'm a 2021 batch pass out from MIT Manipal and I was a civil engineering student. So actually uh, at the end of my civil engineering project was actually I was trying to analyze a building structure but I was trying to understand uh, whether this structure is safe or not and we were using some of the analysis tools for CATIA and STATPRO and in that process I just felt that uh, these are not actually civil engineering what I'm doing it's actually data analysis. That's where I gained my interest for the subject. Look more uh, upon it. That's where I came across this Kilo Villa and I got an opportunity to learn here and enhance my skills something. Okay, great to know. So, uh, <laughs> while doing your project, you somehow realized that uh, data analysis is something that you want to, you know, explore more. So, did you like go like sit in your placements as well before, you know, joining the course at Kilo Villa, or uh, you like simply uh, like started with the Course. Yeah, um, so actually 21 batch uh, was actually the worst time to pass out at since there was least of the placements everywhere, layoffs were going on just because of Corona, but I still uh, sat for many placements. I was more clueless, it was not about going for my passion, it was just to get a job. Okay. So I did some internships, I worked four months there. And in the process, I was also uh, learning in Skilo Villa. After that, I I went through the process. I did all the preparation, all the interview process, and landed a job. Okay, got it. So uh, while going through the process, going through the curriculum, did you anywhere felt you know that uh, maybe you have taken a wrong decision? Maybe you should have continued with the civil engineering only, or like you were like pretty much satisfied with with your decision basically. Yeah, I was actually pretty satisfied with my decision since I was uh, not very good at coding at the time. Deepa Khalosa uh, made us understand that uh, how to become a data analyst you need not to be a ninja coder or something. That's where my interest was very, I was very, very focused on the fact that I'm going to be doing this one day. Yeah, so that wasn't a problem. Okay, I mean, you, you've actually yeah. pointed out a one a very good thing that, you know, you do not have to be like a ninja coder in order to be a data analyst a lot of people uh, have this doubt and there is a myth that you know you you, you need to have those uh, proper reporting skills in order to be a data analyst but that is not a case so uh, okay so let's now uh, talk about your only journey with skillovella so how was your learning experience uh, at skillovella and uh, what all skill sets did you get from the entire curriculum <clears throat> so the very first important that i actually learned in skillovella was the difference between a data analyst and a data scientist. Where you need coding and where you don't need coding, what all uh, particular skill sets you need. And that's was, that was the first learning that I had. And that's when I made my mind to become a data analyst. And I continued my journey. I started with the uh, start with Excel. Uh, we did advanced Excel, all the primitive tables, all the important things that uh, that a business need, all the tools that a business need to solve their problems on Excel. Then we came across SQL. So we understood uh, how big data cannot be handled on Excel and how we have to go on SQL and uh, how can we put out queries and we can refer answers from very big data. And after that, we came across the statistics. So there we learned how to understand data through statistics. So we, are try we were trying to get facts out of those statistics problems that we did. And then we did this case study on the same. Uh, we used all the three and four tools and uh, we did a case study together in a team. We learned how to communicate in a team. We also understood, uh, we made a good communication uh, among all of us. And it was like kind of a, as a team, we uh, solved one problem. For us, it was a 
drone, how Swiggy also might have comes up with a drone, how they will be doing door to door with that. And that was very exciting. Okay, okay, good to know. So, like, on what uh, medium are you like uh, connecting with your peers in order to solve any particular problem or queries? So, um, after a while, in classes, we all were actually pitching it a lot uh, in our live classes that was happening. Uh, so that's how we actually we became a really good friend, and I uh, met some of them after coming here. Yeah, so we had our own groups. We talked a lot about analytics, how people are doing. Some of the peers were actually very senior to us, so we get, uh, got learn a lot of things in that also. Um, they told us how we can use analysis as a part of your you know, journey. So yeah, so we connected on uh, many things like Zoom meetings. We connected on. WhatsApp on our personal levels also we connected. Okay, yeah, I mean we ensure that you know in a in one particular batch there should be versal versatility. So you know there are experienced folks as well, working professionals. There are students as well who are like just a fresher in strain wants to start their career and working professionals who wants to upscale. So that you know both type of uh, you know uh, people can get the relevant knowledge from each other not only from the curriculum from the course that you are learning here great so is there any specific unique feature that you liked about the curriculum uh, so i liked about the portal that we had and the best part was it at the end of the every week we used to have our live classes so any of the doubts it was more of a discussion class than a, a simple classroom program so it was uh, go through the course 100 percent for the whole week and then uh, get all your doubt, doubts uh, compiled and come on sunday be fresh uh, discuss everything get all your doubts cleared i think that life class is part of the daily okay so uh, on an average how much time did you used to spend in order to get your assignments and quizzes done so it was a particular app for every day I used to do like around two to three hours on the same since I was also working. Right. So after that also I was given like two to three hours. At least two hours for sure. Oh, all right. So uh, since you mentioned about the life classes, what role did mentorship played in your uh, entire journey? Do you remember any industry mentors who used to come and take live sessions? Uh, yes. So we had mentors from all over the all over the company. So we had mentors from Meta, we had mentors from Adobe. So yeah, I didn't uh, remember my SQL classes. So our mentor was from Meta. It was not just a classroom program. He also told us how Meta uses SQL or how Meta uses these database systems uh, on Azure. And uh, that gave us a lot of insights on how actually industry works on, on SQL. And also gave us more insight on, okay, so we can also learn about cloud since it, it is big, big in the industry. That was one of the things in the mentorship, I would say that was there. So we were getting more insights from, uh, outside of the subject we were learning. Okay, I mean, I, I am now when I'm listening to this, I am fe- I'm very ex- much excited. I mean, those sessions must be very insightful and, uh, you know, inquisitive uh, kind of sessions where, you know, Apart from what you're learning theoretically, you are also learning that uh, how to apply those things practically to solve those real-world business problems. Okay, so you also said that like you were working along with doing the course. So how difficult was it to manage both the things simultaneously? Uh, it was actually difficult uh, since uh, when you're working, you are expected to go out to people, you are expected to give time to them. It's just that you have to prioritize I, I used to come back home late also. I used to not go out. I used to make sure that I give my two hours to this and then I can go out and do whatever. So you have to prioritize, think, especially when you are working. Right. Because if you are earning, you are having a lot of friends and still you have to sacrifice all those things to give a little bit of time mm-hmm. on the thing that is important to you. Correct. I mean, that is very important. Um, it doesn't go like that, you know, once you have enrolled for the course, then you will just, you know, you be like that. It, and you will just attend. Sometimes when you have time, you attend live sessions. When you have time, you will do your assignments, complete your milestone. It doesn't work like that. You you need to be consistent throughout the process. Then only you can get certified, which is the first and foremost uh, thing that you have to, you know, complete on the in your career track and then only you can further sit for the placements and everything so yeah, it's a practice thing so even at first i was also slacking a lot so i was not going to the assignment 
I was trying to miss some classes, uh, going out for something else. Just thought one class I won't do a lot. But uh, after a while, I felt like this is somewhere I'm slacking, and I felt this is because I was missing some classes. I was not completing the assignments. So yeah, you have to prioritize those. Correct. Absolutely right. So Harsh, uh, moving forward, did you receive adequate support from the team in order to resolve your queries and doubts? Yeah, all the doubts. Since I still remember, so we had a session with the deeper closer on which we told him that it's still SQL is not clear to us. We were we were a bunch of people who were actually we slagged a lot, I believe, and then we came up to him and we were very honest. We we, we still cannot clear interviews because of this SQL. Then he, I still remember, he took a full week class every day on a call, one and a half in the night. So, and we all attended that class. He gave all the time. So I believe, yeah, I got all that uh, help from the team. Great, Harsh. So, uh, can you now also tell us about your placement journey at Skillovilla? Like, was it smooth for you? Was there any difficulty that you faced in the entire process? Yeah, so the whole placement process was a lot of ups. There was a lot of ups and downs. I regularly followed up with Skillo regards the placement team. I also kept a plan on my own through LinkedIn and uh, Uh I kept my learnings and everything in place on LinkedIn so people can see what I'm learning and uh, what are things they at a company might want. That actually at the end I got into my analytics. After a lot of after some options, I get got into my analytics as a technical associate. I got a hike of two hundred percent, so that was another helpful thing. And also, my patience actually paid off at the end. I actually kept uh, telling this below with what kind of placement I got, what of things I'm getting. They they kept uh, telling me, okay, you should go for this, or you shouldn't go for this, or you should ask for this, or you shouldn't ask for that. Okay, great. Uh, first of all, congratulations, uh, Harsh, for you know getting the placement uh, at the right company. You very well said that uh, like this is something that is going to be helpful for a lot of people out there. Uh, that uh, you know you should uh, keep on posting of all the things that you have learned in the entire journey. One thing is that it uh, LinkedIn is a definitely a great platform for networking and to build your brand actually out there in the industry. Learning what things that you have learned if you are posting it out there, so people will also have an understanding that okay, you know all of those things, and from where you all you are learning all those things, and how you are now applying it to your current learning, and also it helps in networking. Experience. Talking more about your placement journey, um, so what all process did you uh, follow? So I am believing that you've gone through the resume building sessions. Then there must be mock interviews as well. So how was uh, that for you? Yeah. So we went to the resume building uh, session, and that was an IPO. So I always used to think uh, having a wonderful, colorful resume will help me land a job or something. Mm-hmm. But then I came across that the platform. They told me how to actually build a resume, how to be more clear and more expressive on your resume. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was a very eye-opening session for me. Mm-hmm. And then about the mock interview. So in mock interview, it was very straightforward mock interview. So we had full experience on what kind of questions would be asked, what the pointers they might be coming up with. For us, it was conducted by Deepak Karosa. He knew the process. He knew what all things happen in an interview because he was someone who took a lot of interviews. So having that experience was also very helpful for me. Ah, uh, great, Harsh. So like as a final word. Uh... Is there anything that you would like to recommend to all those first of all students out there who who are from civil background and they have this sense of doubt that you know I'm not like we have already cleared this the coding is something that just not required actually in order to pursue the course but also they have this doubt I mean being a student you must have experienced that right so can you clear that out for you know, all those people audience out there. Are from civil background and want to pursue their course and uh, in a data industry, and also for the working professionals who also have this um, doubt that you know how can I manage it along with my uh, working hours. So the very first thing I would suggest to anyone is to research through, just to research and un- understand that this is something you want to pursue because just for the sake of package or un- un- hearing stories of hypes, if you get into this. Then you might regret it, but if you have a genuine interest for the subject, then I would say you'll really enjoy the process, the whole process. 
and I think Spillover is a great place for that. So keep some patience, keep learning. I think these are two of the key factors I think anyone I would suggest to. You've put that point very well, Gordon. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Harsh, for doing this uh, interview and being honest with us. And uh, it's been a great uh, journey. I, I believe that you've got a great journey at the platform. And since now you are a part of Skillable Alumni membership as well, you uh, have the assistance, two years of assistance. So whenever you want to switch in any other company, we are there to help you out. And you just know you just, we are just a call away. So all the best for your uh, future. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Shriti. Collaborate with the Skillovilla community today.